All right, the big showdown. MCP versus agent to agent versus rag. Do you need to use all of them? Some of them? We are gonna find out. Hello guys and girls. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Raj. I'm a principal solutions architect working at AWS. So whatever I'm sharing is from my conversations with actual customers and real world projects. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna go over briefly on each of those technologies, then I'm gonna connect all of it together as well as the differences and the similarities. Okay, the first thing is MCP. Uh, so let's say you have an application which is running some a large language model and you have some agent or code and you ask this application, hey, what's the weather in Tokyo and provide hotel prices in Tokyo. So this application, this LLM has no idea about the latest weather in Tokyo or the latest hotel prices. Uh, so there will be some agent or some code which needs to connect to some external tools, maybe weather.com or some other tools exposed via API, similar tools for hotel price. So this agent or code can go to this tool for the hotel price, uh, weather this tool for hotel price. How will they do it? Well, this code needs to have some sort of API orchestration, right? So the API will have some sort of URL, the header, payload, all that stuff. And each of these tool will have this different API URL, different uh, payload, etc. There is no dynamic discovery per se. So this is how MCP or model context protocol was born. With MCP, there is a standardized way for these agents to communicate with different tools. So in this case, instead of this code, having separate code for each of these weather hotel price, it will use this MCP call and it's dynamic. So this MCP client can connect to this MCP server and all the connection to this weather tool, hotel price tool is standardized by this server. You don't need to worry about it. All you need to worry about is connect to this MCP server, which is running locally in your laptop or you can run externally. Then the server connects to the tool, gets you the information so a standardized protocol for connecting to multiple tools. When you connect to this server, the server says, okay, this is what this underlying tool does. This is the payload schema that I am expecting, etc." So you can do that dynamically. For example, look, I'm connecting to all these tools, the weather tool, AWS core server, cost analysis, documentation, diagrams. I did not need to code anything. All I did is connect to this MCP servers, which is very, very easy. And if you want to see this in action with a demo, I'm gonna give the link up top. You can see the detailed step-by-step -step demo and you will see how easy is this. You don't need to go put some API definition, payload, all that stuff. Okay, so this is from the agent to different underlying tools. But how about instead of you asking the question to this application, it's done by another agent. Right? So this agent A, maybe some sort of booking agent is talking to this agent B, which is in charge of getting the weather and some other information. How will this communication be look like? Well, the same way, Every, this is also API. So in a current world, you have the same challenge. You have to have the separate custom code for each agent connecting to each other. And over time, as each agent talks to different agents, this gets very chaotic. Your code has to have separate API orchestration for each of these agent. So that's how A2A was born. Uh, so A2A is similar to MCP, but MCP is between the agent, one specific agent and the underlying tools, or it could be local databases as well. Okay, but tool is the most used one, but you can also connect to local data sources. But A to A is agent to agent. So if this agent needs to connect to a tool, you cannot do that using A to A. This agent needs to have his own MCP client and MCP server and connect to its own tools, right? However, with A to A, agent to agent communication can be done through a standard protocol. Like this agent using MCP client connecting to this MCP server and saying, what is the tool that you are exposing to and what's the capabilities, what's the payload, etc. This is exactly similar thing that A2A does for agent to agent. So this agent will connect to this agent B's A2A server and say, what does your agent do? 
right? What is the description? However, it does not do the payload. I'm showing the standardized code for agent to agent. So for every agent, this is standard. It connects to the agent using the agent card and then it can get the task, events, it knows how to submit a task to it, get the status, etc. So A to A is agent capability discovery, very similar to how agent is discovering the tool capability or database information using MCP. Endpoint URL, standard way to submit task from one agent to another. You can think of it similar to submitting prompts. You can get notification of those task statuses. And A to A is also supposed to be secure, yet to be seen. However, MCP also gives you the payload schema. A to A does not give payload schema yet. So now let's talk about RAG. Uh, so RAG is Retrieval Augmented Generation. So you might have a local database with some information. Then you uh, run those local database information through a embedding model. In this case, I'm showing Bedrock, which is hosting the models. So this embedding model will take all the information from local database and then create vectors and save them in a vector DB such as OpenSearch or Kendra. Then you, the user, can ask you a question, maybe exposed via API, hosted in API Gateway, goes to the Lambda. However, instead of directly going to LLM, now your application code checks this vector database and says, hey, I have this question from the user do you have more information on this? And this Lambda code, or could be any other code, goes and searches this vector database, gets whatever related information it gets, and then adds it to the original question. So if the user asked a simple question, what is the information about 2025 Mercedes model, which LLM doesn't have yet, but your company has it. So you have that in the vector database, it gets all the information, sends it to the LLM, LLM massages, formats it, maybe it has some other information, adds it, and then generates the answer. That's why the name retrieve additional information, augment it as the context, and then generate the answer. So here comes the question. So this is RAG. So now you might say, hold on a second Raj, we just learned that using MCP, you can also connect to the local databases. So why do I need to do this vector DB, this, all this embedding? Why can't this user ask the question directly here and then using a MCP client, I just connect to this local databases directly? Well, there are some problems to that. Any of you who have worked in actual real world projects in an enterprise setting, you know this thing, you don't want to give access to your databases directly. Why? If you give access to this MCP client, which is run by another team, another team will come, another team will come, and then they will eat away the capacity from this database, not the size, but the input output, the CPU capacity. This database is very precious. If a customer is buying something, looking up information, your application is using these databases, memory, CPU, and storage capacity. As soon as you give access to this database to other, that means they will start querying it and that will take away capacity. Not only that, security is an issue. If you accidentally give a right access to this database, they can mess some data up. So with this RAG model, this embedding framework, you don't need to give access to this database. Instead, you can give access to just the vector DB, which is not being used to serve production traffic directly. And this also isolates the local database changes from outside. So if you go and change a schema of the database, these applications don't need to know about it or not get impacted by it because they shouldn't have access to this database. They can access this vector database, which does not get impacted by your schema change because everything is saved by vector. If they want to do this search, they don't even need to change the code. And RAG actually indexed the data, right? Uh, so basically when you run this through bedrock embedding model, it actually indexes it. So depending on the search, it can use those indexes. And I'm just showing this with one database. It is possible there could be other database or even like regular documents, which you can also feed 
through this bedrock embedding model and all that could be stored in the one vector database. And you don't do this real time. However, this vector database needs to be updated in case more information has been added. So every night you can run a batch to run this embedding model and save this in vector DB. So this kind of answers the question that why the MCPs for most cases should not go to these local databases directly, especially if this local database is used by an application actual production transaction. Okay, so what is the solution? Okay, this is the cool part. Like I showed you, there are different tools for different functionalities. We also have a tool for bedrock knowledge base. So you can have a MCP client using MCP protocol with MCP server connect to this knowledge base directly. So in this case, the embedding is happening, okay? So every night you can keep doing the embedding, nothing changes, but if you want, you can use this MCP client to connect to this vector database and your user can ask this question directly to this application hosting the LLM, right? So that is one way. If this agent needs to connect to other agents, you could do this using A2A. There are some consideration, okay? So this path, right, the traditional RAG will be faster because there is some additional back and forth with this, right? When MCP client talks to MCP server, asks for, hey, what do you do? What is the schema, etc., etc. So it needs to go through all that. Whereas with this path, everything is embedded into the code. Drawback is, you need to maintain this code, but the pro is it is faster. Whereas here, the pro is it is all dynamic. If you have another knowledge base, it can go connect with that, write all that stuff dynamically. But the disadvantage it is a little bit of more latency sensitive. So ideal use case, if you have multiple other tools connected, right? So maybe this uh, agent is connected to tool A, tool B, weather tool, hotel price tool, some other tool, and you are just want to use this knowledge base as one of these tools to orchestrate everything together, then this solution is ideal. However, if all you are doing is answering question related to the specific company information, so whatever is in this vector DB, maybe if you are an autom automotive company, you want to, the users will ask questions about new models or the cars and etc. Then the rag will suffice and it will be more than enough. Hopefully this was useful. If this was, click the like button, smash it. If that's something you are into, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.